Welcome to my classes on Fundamentals of Electrical Engineering. These classes are intended for the final and pre-final year students of relevant brands of engineering preparing for their gate examinations. Hence, the course is divided into about 10 modules and they are Engineering Mathematics, Electrical Circuits, Signals and Systems, Control Systems, Electrical Machines, Power System, a little bit of power electronics, electromagnetic fields, measurements, electronics, and of course, general aptitude. Further, each of these modules are divided into subsections. Like for instance, in electrical circuits, there are network structures, circuit elements and their working, solving DC circuits, both with dependent and independent sources. Again, AC circuits with single phase and three phase contents. For further, power measurements, transients, and two port networks. And, and the, these uh, subsections will be, uh, will be delivered in four to five uh, sessions or so. And in each of these sessions, we will have, in each of these sessions, we'll have around three to five minutes of discussion of the relevant theory, some of the methods or tips that may help you to solve the problems in an easier manner. About 15 to 20 minutes, there will be a discussion on eight to 10 problems or so, depending upon the difficulty levels. And the remaining few minutes, we'll, we will consolidate. It will be for recapitulation. Perhaps some practical applications will be discussed. And of course, the takeaways from each of these sessions. So now let's come to a particular uh, an example, which will be the model for the coming sessions. Here we have a circuit and it can be seen that it has several components. So what do we do? So the first, um, uh, the, the first, um, uh, of course, uh, the, this problem has a lot to do with Thevenin's theorem and, um, uh, and of course, the structure of the network. So with respect to Thevenin's theorem, the theory content essentially is that it follows the conservation law. Okay, so that is one important aspect. Uh, as for every system, this uh, system also follows the conservation law. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two is that the network structures uh, lend themselves into a particular situation wherein uh, currents flow in a particular manner only and that is Kirchhoff's law. So let's move on to uh, the methodology. Okay, so the methodology is where I suggest that you always look at the circuit first or the diagram that is given first because when you go to the English reading of the problem then uh, it, it gives you uh, it gives rise to reinforcement. So here we see okay, and when you read when you observe the circuit uh, please compartmentalize like for instance uh, we see that there are uh, sources here. So first look at the sources and they, uh, that the sources are DC in nature. There is one um, uh, voltage source and another current source and together uh, they was, uh, they cater to the entire circuit where wherein the circuit elements are inductors on the left side, the capacitors on the right side and supported by resistances. Okay, so now, now let's, and we also see a pair of terminals. Now let's read the problem and meanwhile you can also have a look at the answers. So when you look at the answers, you see that, this is applicable to MCQs, you see that of all the answers, only A has, A does not have S. So what is S? S is of course, as you very well know, the Laplace transform of the differential with respect to time on d by dt. If that is the case, then if you have a DC circuit, then d by dt is irrelevant. And this is a DC circuit. So in that case, DC circuit because energization happens to be by DC sources. Okay? So, if the, so if that is the case, then uh, we see that, um, uh, that that S is going to be zero. So the answer is going to be one. So that's uh, that's something that you have inherent in your that you have inherent in your mind as you read the problem. Okay. So let's read the problem. The Thevenin's equivalent impedance ZTH between the nodes P and Q in the following circuit is. Okay? So automatically the answer is one. Why? Because steady state Thevenin's uh, is applicable to steady state. Okay. So that's point number one. Point number two is how do you five? How do you calculate the Thevenin's impedance? Okay. So there are three steps to be followed. First and foremost, you 
dead in the uh, sources that's again conservation law because the the, the the there are two separate entities for any circuit one is what feeds it that is the sources and what takes on the uh, it takes on the feed okay so we have um, uh, the sources so and the current source is replaced by an open circuit the short uh, the, um, uh, and, and the voltage source is replaced by a short circuit that's point number one point number two how do how do the elements react to these sources to DC, the inductor has to be a short circuit as per conservation laws because there is a current flow through it and so voltage has to be zero. Otherwise, there will be unlimited energy stored in it. Okay. Similarly, for capacitor, it has to be an open circuit because uh, it will have no, uh, it will have, it, it should not have any current flow through it because the voltage will be what is, uh, what will be developed across it via the charges that are collected in it. Okay. So, we see that in this case, we have uh, uh, so let's go for uh, third point is let's start from uh, uh, one terminal and go back to the other terminal and pick out uh, the impedances on, on all the paths and all the paths that are available are, are parallel together. This is exactly how the current behaves. So let's go from uh, 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 terminal P to the left side. We see a short circuit, then we see one ohm resistor and then we see a short circuit again and we go back to Q. Okay. Going to the right side, we encounter an, uh, an open circuit and immediately we stop because current cannot flow. So, there is only one single resistance obstructing the whole uh, flow of current and uh, with respect to term, uh, terminus terminals and that is going to be one ohms. So, this is the way that you solve, this is the way that you understand and uh, solve the problem. Uh, the, there are two, two, uh, two tiers. One is of course uh, the, through the answers themselves. Second is of course through the theory involved. Okay? And what is the theory involved? One point is that the Thevenin's happens to be a steady state. Second is, of course, the fact that the network structures behave in a particular manner such that they respond to the they respond to the sources based on uh, whether they are DC or AC. Okay, and um, uh, and uh, the major takeaway from this uh, from this uh, pro uh, from this pro problem is the methodology and the understanding that the um, uh, that the DC power sources um, uh, are reacted to by inductors um, with the short circuit and by the, the, the capacitors by a noble circuit.